an angled leg vise. You don't see them very often. And why is that? Spoiler alert, I have no idea. This thing is freaking splendid. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about the myriad benefits of an angled leg vise, as well as the particular hardware that I have on this vise. And I'm also going to talk about how pairing it with a matching sliding dead man makes this vise about as versatile as a woodworking vise gets. Now one of the most common annoyances you're going to encounter with any woodworking vise is this propensity to rack. Meaning that if you put something that's on one corner of your vise chop and try to clamp that, the other side of the vise chop is going to collapse inward towards the front of the bench. And then your vise chop isn't in parallel with the front of the bench anymore and your holding uh, strength is compromised. So with uh, even a vertical leg vise, the amount of clamping area that you have uh, without any racking is typically the area directly above the vise screw. Now when you have an angled leg vise, you're offsetting that to match the angle of the vise chop such that the clamping area that you can clamp without racking is offset to the right of the vise screw. That means I can put anything right next to the vise screw all the way down to the floor if I want. Clamp that up and there is no racking going on there. That by itself is worth the price of admission in my opinion. But there are other advantages to it as well. If you were to pair that angle leg vise with a matching sliding dead man, you, you'll notice that this dead man has two legs and one of them matches the angle of the leg vise itself. That means I can put a dog stop in that sliding dead man and support work pieces from underneath. So I can put something in like this, bring that in. Again, it's next to the vice screw, but it's not racking, and it's also supported from underneath. If I want to do any kind of chopping operations um, or pounding, I'm all good there. And it's about as solid as the workbench itself. Now I can also work the edges of long boards. And this is true for any bench that has a good sliding dead man on it. I can drop that right on top of a dog stop like that. In this case, the board is narrow enough that it actually bypasses the screw and goes all the way through. I can work a board as long as the bench itself or longer if I want and go up to, you know, eight feet and be able to work that edge just fine. But the sliding dead man, uh, say I have a board that is really wide. Again, in a case like this, it really doesn't matter all that much. Let's put this here. In this case, I'm kind of butting the edge of the board right up against the vice screw. I can work into the edge of that board and it has the added support of being butted up against there. So it's not going to slide forward even if I hadn't tightened this very well. That's pretty nice. Now what if I'm working with a board that is a bit narrow? Say I want to put a narrow board in like this, but none of these dog holes is high enough to really support that. Well, here's a little bonus tip. You can use something like this, the uh, Veritas Wonder Pup. This is basically a surface clamp. And if you work with gravity and get a little rhythm going, you can adjust it much more quickly than you can just sitting here, you know, trying to turn it. Put that in your dog hole. Now you have basically an infinitely adjustable support for your sliding dead man for narrow pieces. Drop that on top of there. Close it up. There you go, I can work the edges of narrow boards with adequate support from underneath. So you may have noticed that in the course of all this messing around with the leg vise that this particular vise is like a quick release vise. There's no screw here. So I'm gonna bring the camera on over here so you can kind of see what this particular hardware is like because it is quite unusual, admittedly. Um, but I think it works really well, so I'm going to show you that right now. So here I am with some of my patented shaky cam footage of the leg vise here. I'll show you what the hardware looks like. So 
Well, this is how you'll notice that there's not a screw here. There's no threading. This is a smooth shaft. This is a custom leg vise from Hovarder Custom Vice. It's the VX20. And the way it works is basically is there's what they call a slip clutch back here. Um, that mechanism is similar to what you would see in maybe like a like an F-style clamp. Um, so basically I bring that in, give that like a half turn, and I am good and tight. You'll also notice that down here, my parallel guide doesn't have any holes in it. I don't stick pins in it. Instead it uses a uh, what looks like a bicycle chain. Now basically what's going on there is there's a, a plug in the front of the vice chop that holds the chain. The chain goes through the front of the vice leg, comes out on the back side and goes over a roller down the back of the leg. You know, this is why I have split stretchers on my bench. Goes underneath another roller and to the end of the parallel guide. And when I close this, you can see the chain is loose, but when, when I tighten the vise, it takes up the slack and it keeps the vise chop in parallel. Or actually, in this case, I have a little bit of toe in at the top here, which is adjustable via this little screw down here. And once that's set, it stays put really well. Uh, it hasn't moved in years, as far as I can tell. Um, that is made by a company called Ancora Yacht Service. I'm not sure why it's called that, but that's what it is. And uh, I'll put a link in the description for both Hovarda Custom Vice and Ancora Yacht Service in case you want to go to those websites and check out that hardware. And so now you might be wondering why I'm using this and not something like a, uh, well, for one, a pin or maybe like one of those fancy crisscross devices. So yes, one of the perceived drawbacks of an angle leg vise is that it doesn't work all that well with one of those crisscross parallel guide mechanisms. And the reason being that when you angle your leg vise like this, uh, basically just via gravity, it puts a kind of a weird lateral binding force on the vise chop. If I was to push on this, you'll see it doesn't even really want to close. Uh, and then it's, again, because of that kind of lateral binding force that having it angled puts on it. Now I found a way around this that actually ends up being uh, really advantageous for me. It turns out that if I push with my foot at the bottom of the vice chop, it closes very easily and consistently. Just like that. This basically makes it such that my vice is a hands-free vice. So I can hold a workpiece with both hands if I need to see if I'm trying to, you know, just adjust it just right because I'm doing, you know, dovetailing or whatever. All I have to do is push on it with my foot. That gives enough tension that it'll hold in place and then I can tighten that up and we're good to go. So being able to operate that with my foot actually is really nice. And that's why I don't really mind that I can't use a crisscross mechanism on this vise. Any good woodworking bench is basically a large clamping mechanism. And I hope to have made a compelling case for how an angle leg vise is one of the most versatile clamping mechanisms you can put on a bench. If you're thinking about doing a bench build yourself, I would hope that you consider one of these. And besides, just look at it. It's dead sexy. I mean, with that angle, it's all aerodynamic. My air conditioning is right here. The air moves past it this way. It's a very low drag coefficient. Wait a minute, what was I talking about? Yes, angle leg vise. It's the cat's pajamas, the bee's knees. It's fantastic. I would recommend it to anybody. Now, if you like what you saw here, please hit like and subscribe. It would help me out a lot. Also, hit the little bell icon if you want to be notified whenever I release a new video. And if you didn't like what you saw here, keep it to yourself, pal. Or check out one of my other videos. You might like one of those. Thank you for watching.